This video is brought to you by the Corsair Vengeance K70 and K95. These fully mechanical keyboards are designed for performance gaming. Visit Corsair.com slash Vengeance Gaming to learn more. 770 1440p review, take two, shot one. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you've probably heard me say before, why are you buying a high-end graphics card if you're still connecting to your monitor via VGA? I would actually go further than that now. If you're spending a few hundred dollars on a graphics card and you're not running at a resolution higher than 1080p, you're probably doing something wrong and you're probably misallocating your funds in some way because monitors are so inexpensive now. They've got those cheap ones on eBay. You can get IPS panels for a few hundred bucks for a 1440p display. It, that You should make that part of your upgrade plan in order to have a better, more immersive gaming experience. The GTX 770 is a direct replacement for the 670 and comes in with a very similar spec to the outgoing GTX 680. It's got that same full-fledged GK104 core. It's clocked higher than the 680 by default using GPU Boost 2 to achieve its, its own boosted overclocked speeds and to make it operate, you know, at a fixed temperature and all the cool stuff that comes along with GPU Boost 2. It has a better cooler that looks outstanding in addition to keeping the card cool enough, as well as an updated fan profile that makes it less uh, less uh, liable to ramp up and ramp down in an annoying fashion. So it's got all that going for it, but the big improvement over GTX 680 from my standpoint is the 7 gigahertz GDDR5 memory on it. So it's still using a 256 bit bus, but the memory is clocked substantially higher, allowing for it to perform better, particularly at higher resolutions, as you are about to see. Now we're using our usual standardized test bench. We've got an Intel Core i7-3960X at 4 gigahertz, 16 gigs of Kingston RAM, a P9X79 Deluxe motherboard, a 128 gig SSD for our boot drive, as well as the latest drivers from both the green and the red teams. Without further ado, let's get into the performance numbers. Metro Last Light is an unbelievably demanding game. At 1440p, even the GTX Titan and GTX 780 are brought to their knees. However, their version of brought to their knees is very different from the rest of the cards. You can see here that memory bandwidth is king. So those cards do well. The GTX 770 beats the card that it's replacing as well as the card that it is very similar to in terms of spec except for its increased memory bandwidth quite handily in this test, with both of the cards from the red team also doing phenomenally well, partly due to the fact that they have great memory bandwidth and 3 gig memory buffers as opposed to the 2 gig memory buffers that we see on the NVIDIA cards that we have in this test. In Tomb Raider, we see a hint of the things that we saw in our 1080p performance review of this card, where it looks like the GPU boost on this particular card isn't that competitive with the way that our 680 turns up when overclocked. Remember, we overclock all of our cards for our performance testing. So what that revealed was that our GTX 770 is not necessarily faster than our 680 once both cards are overclocked to the max. I'm expecting this to change at some point with some tweaks, and, I mean, if that's not the case, I'm expecting most 770s to boost up higher than our particular one, because remember, this is a higher TDP card, which means it can is able to draw more power, it has a higher stock clock speed, and it has that much faster memory to go with it. With all of that said, we've got GTX Titan and GTX 780 in completely their own world, way atop of the graphs. Then we've got a clustering of cards that are all pretty much within margin of error of the ones on either side of them, followed up by the GTX 660 Ti and the GTX 670 down at the very bottom. In Bioshock Infinite, we see another example of GTX Titan, GTX 780 completely running away with it, stealing the show, and everything else looking like a very sort of clustered grouping of cards. Once again though, we see our 770, in spite of the fact that we did observe some weird ramping of the core clock speed, pull ahead of the GTX 680, and it looks like, remember guys, at higher resolutions, we're more dependent on memory performance, it looks like that memory is really helping out the card here. In Far Cry 3, same pattern. Those top two cards are the top two cards and everything else is below them. But we do see the 770 pull ahead not only of the 670, in 
a pretty sort of impressive fashion, but we see it pull ahead of the GTX 680 as well. So we can attribute this to the improved memory bandwidth once again. Moving on to Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Remember, these are based on the same engine, but have very different demands on your system. We see, again, GTX Titan, GTX 780, and everything else very, very close after that, with the GTX 770 being the only GK104 based card that really separated itself in this test. We did rerun these numbers, and it's pretty bizarre, and we're not quite sure how we ended up with the same performance with all three of these cards, especially at such a GPU bound resolution, but there you have it. The 770 was the only one that really separated itself. Crisis 3 is another game where we see the GTX 770's very incremental improvements over the last generation GeForce cards, and we see GTX Titan and GTX 780 just kind of stomping all over everything, just like they are probably gonna continue to do for a while until AMD manages to launch some kind of counterattack that can in some way address the GTX 780 and GTX Titan. So what's the conclusion for this? GTX 770 is very suitable for running at 1440p, just like GTX 680 was before it, except more so. It looks better, it's quieter. Not only is it quieter, but the way the fan ramps up and down is less annoying. You get GeForce experience, which allows you to keep your drivers updated as well as gives you recommendations for your game settings, which might not be relevant to you, but might be relevant to someone who you recommend a card to if you know that they can't handle handling all that stuff on their own. And it comes in at a lower price than the GTX 680 that it is inheriting most of its technology from, but not its looks. You get a card that looks very premium, sounds very premium, performs very premium, and is suitable for gaming at that resolution at a price point that it wasn't available at before. So it's really hard to go wrong. Bear in mind, guys, the numbers you were looking at in this test were based on us running at extremely high settings at that resolution, even with cards like the Titan to get really smooth, playable frame rates, you'd probably end up turning things down from, you know, ultra settings with anti-aliasing all over the place because it is much more demanding on your graphics card to run at a higher resolution. Thank you for checking out my 1440p performance review of the GTX 770 from NVIDIA. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.